Hello my creative critters and welcome to Sketching with Sarah. I'm Sarah and today I'm very excited to share with you a watercolor mixed media painting I created in a really old book that I got at my local bookstore. I recently saw an Instagram reel of an artist doing a really pretty watercolor landscape painting in an old book. And she emphasized how well really old book paper is amazing for watercolor and I had to find out for myself. Her Instagram at is Mama Thing Crafts, and she does a lot of these really pretty watercolor studies and she paints inside of books a lot. So you should follow her. Her page is so aesthetically pleasing to scroll through and I just love it so go check her out. And honestly, seeing her post got me the most inspired to paint that I've been in a while. So with this newfound motivation, I went to my local bookstore that sells new and old and used books. And they have this whole section in the front of the store of really pretty hardcover books. And I just love the look of them. The rich burgundy leather hardcover ones caught my eye the most, so I picked a couple of those. I really love this whole section of the leathery covers with the golden details. They all just made me feel so fancy and smart. I felt like Princess Belle wandering the Beast's library with all of the shapes and sizes and colors of these really old books. I honestly don't remember the last time I actually sat down with a physical book of any kind and read it from cover to cover. I always just get the audiobooks and listen to it while commuting or working on arts and other projects. I did enjoy hanging out in a bookstore though. The atmosphere of a bookstore is so nice. It makes me feel smart and also makes me feel comfortable that people won't bug me and I can just do my own thing and wander around and just feeling the paper of old books. Cause someone could come around the corner and I could just pretend that I'm interested in the book and then go back to feeling the papers. So since my mission at this store was strictly to find an old book with nice thick paper to make art in, it was important to me to find a pretty book that I could not give a single care less about reading ever. And what book did I choose for today? The Curious Case of Sid Finch by George Plimpton. Honestly, I was kind of interested at first reading the title, like a curious case of a guy. Is it like some memoir of a really weird dude? Some kind of psychological study of someone insane? Either way, I didn't really care. I just liked the color of the book, so I bought it. I did look into it a little more when I got home and apparently this book is signed by the author. So if you're a big fan of George Plimpton, sorry, I'm painting in a book that he signed, I guess. But apparently this Sid Finch dude is some fictional baseball player that was kind of an April Fool's joke in Sports Illustrated magazine. And a lot of people believe that he was a real player on the New York Mets baseball team. I guess Sid had his quirks in the story and people really believe that he was a real guy on the team. They even got someone to pretend to be him for photos. And even the Mets got in on it and gave him his own uniform with his own number. And a lot of people fell for it. I didn't do a ton of research, but that's the spark notes that I gathered from a quick Google search. I love that to find out about a book I just bought instead of reading the actual book. I just Googled it. Yikes. I don't really follow or care much about the lives of people playing sports. I mean, I know about the famous ones and specific players on teams that I root for, but reading a book about a fictional baseball player just isn't something I would reach for to read or care about at all. I'm sure sports athletes have cool lives and good for them. I would just rather get invested in a world of fantasy with magic and mythical creatures because I want to escape and not follow around a fictional baseball player. Could I be completely wrong and this story is actually amazing and captivating and I'm a fool to not read it? Possibly, but will I ever take the time to actually read it to find out? Definitely not. I just don't care enough to and if you're watching this and you've happened to read this book and it is amazing, that's cool. I'm glad you enjoyed it. It's just not my cup of tea. Anyway, what do I care about though? Making art of animals and you know what a finch is? It's a bird, so I'm painting an American goldfinch in the Curious Case of Sid Finch book. I would even argue that this is the Curious Cage of Sid the Finch. Get it? Because he's stuck in a book, like a cage. 
So yeah, after I picked this book, I knew I wanted to do some kind of animal study and watercolor and how could I not paint a finch in this book? I thought it was really fun and it made me happy, so that's what I'm doing. I found a really pretty photo of an American goldfinch and it was perched on a tree with these really pretty pink flowers. I think they might be cherry blossoms, but with the blue sky and the yellow bird with the pink accents, I just really love the composition of the photo and I was really pulled to this photo so I used it to study in this watercolor piece. I always have a link to my Pinterest where I have a collection of a lot of the photo references that I use in my videos and personal art that I do. I also tried really hard to figure out who the original photographer of the original photo is because I did find the photo on Pinterest and the copyright watermark on it is very pixelated. I did comment on the Pinterest photo asking if they knew who the photo was taken by, but as of right now, no response. But if that changes, I will leave a link to them in my description box for you to check them out and the other photography that they've done if you're curious. The watercolor palette that I'm using in this video is the White Knights watercolor palette and I've used it before and I love this palette because all of the colors are so pigmented and there's just such a variety of colors as well. I do have a video doing the blob art challenge where I took all of the colors in this palette and swatch them and then created little doodles of the swatches that I created. So check that video out if you want to see the full palette and all of the colors that it has. And I was a little nervous to wash over the whole page in this book in blue as the background. And I realized I should have maybe left the area with the finch blank so that the yellow could stand out more. But I was so surprised that when I went in with the yellow, it's like there was nothing behind it. The yellow was just so bright. I was really, really generous with the water in this piece and the paper held up so, so well. Even with the minimal warping that happened to the paper, it held together really well and nothing bled to the other side, minus some areas on the edges where I wasn't super careful about bleeding over to the next one on the edges of the pages. I think the best part about painting in a book is that if there's any warping on the page from the water to flatten it out again, you just close the book, put a few more books or something heavy on it for a day, and it's back to being flat. I really love taking my time and enjoying the watercolor process and painting layer by layer to build onto the color and the depth of the piece. I love that watercolor forces me to slow down and practice patience. So let's hang out with some music while I finish the painting part and I'll meet you back here at the end of the video with some final thoughts and the final piece after adding in colored pencil and finishing it up.
so I hope you guys are enjoying watching my watercolor process painting this American goldfinch in my curious cage of Sid the Finch book. I'm really happy with the end results and more than anything, I love the process of creating it. I haven't done a proper sit down and paint type of video in a while and making the time to do this was a lot because I don't have a lot of free time with my full time job to put into art at the moment, which makes me sad, but I'm hoping that'll change soon. After letting the watercolor dry completely and then letting the page flatten in the book overnight, I looked at it with fresh eyes and just started using minimal colored pencil here and there. Wherever I felt like it could use more structure or texture, I really wanted to preserve most of the watercolor outlines and texture that this paper emphasizes so nicely. So I didn't want to go in too much with the colored pencil to mask that. But overall, I highly recommend next time you are at your local thrift store or flea markets or used bookstore, pick up a couple old books and feel the paper in them because you might come across a gem that you can use to paint with watercolor. Something about the type on the page just adds so much to the piece and I think it adds such a nice border that can be broken out of with the rest of the painting and I just think it frames the subject of the painting, in this case Mr. Sid Finch, very nicely. Thank you again to Mama Thing Crafts on Instagram for sharing and inspiring this whole thing for me. I think it'll be so fun to fill this book with watercolor paintings of all kinds of bird studies. So stick around on this channel and follow me on Instagram. See what else I paint in this old book. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me paint as much as I enjoyed painting it. And even if you feel a little more inspired to create something today, leave this video a like and subscribe for more art and animal related content. I upload a new video for you here every Friday and I'd love for you to come along on my YouTube journey. Also, if you like what I do, I do have a Patreon if you'd like to support me and my art for as little as a dollar a month. I do also have higher tiers with cool perks like getting a personalized hand drawing of any animal or animal hybrid of your choice. And if any of that sounds cool to you, check it out, it'll be linked in my description. If you made it this far, leave me a comment and let me know if you've ever painted in a book before. Would you ever? And what bird should I paint in this book next? Also, I'd love to know what kind of book you just could not give a single care about reading or listening to. And maybe please let me know if I'm not alone in not reading in a long time. It's just not something I really enjoy doing and I think that's okay and I shouldn't feel dumb for not reading, okay? <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much for watching. Stay creative and I will see you in next Friday's video. Bye.